um, to start our song service, shall we sing hymn number eight? We gather together. Hymn number eight.
for our opening song, shall we all rise and sing hymn number 522. My hope is built on nothing less. Hymn number 522. And to learn more about you and your will for us, and also to enjoy Christian fellowship, help us to be watchful in prayer, strong in faith, courageous, and unafraid of the trials and temptations we encounter. We are inviting the Holy Spirit in the midst of us and bless our Sabbath services and our participants. Bless our families represented by each one of us as well as our church members around the world. We pray for those families who lost loved ones for comfort in the Turkey and Syria earthquake. And please help those survivors who are still in hospital. Help us to remember the oldest things, the making calamities, pandemic wars, and demonstration are all signs of the so return, so we must go to be faithful unto you. Forgive us of our sins and those in words and in deed. And all this we ask in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Mark 4, 3 to 4. Verse 5 to 6. I am a rocky person. They say I'm stone in shadow. The Bible? I don't know if I really believe all of it. The church? I'm getting this illusion. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. I am a thorny person. I believe in my God. Of course, I have no time for anything. And I go to church, well, at least once in a while. I used to read, I used to really enjoy spiritual things, but something must turn wrong. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. Oh, how I love to spend time with God's Word. I could get enough of it. And you know, it's amazing what God has been doing in my life lately. His answered prayer and given the joy in His service that I never thought possible. God is so good. In, in each case, the farmer is the same. It is Christ Himself, the divine gardener. The seed is the same, the Word of God. It is the soil that is different soils for different kinds of people for different results. Let's see if we can discover what makes a difference. Hearts, where the good seed was sown, I have some questions to ask you. What sort of friends do you have? How important are they in your life? My friends are very important to me. They have no time for God. So why should I? Satan comes and takes away the word. I've tried making friends at the church, but they are a bunch of snobs. The church held their back so pious on Sabbath. But do you know what I heard about him? I was one him for a bunch of Since they have no root, they last only a short time. Friends, I just bought a fine house in the best part of the town of town. I want to associate with those who are successful and well known in our community. <coughs> I want the best for my family and my children. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word. I have lots of friends, but my best friend is Jesus. I've just made friends with my new neighbors, and they want me to have a Bible study with them. Isn't that great? And I've made some special friends at the soup kitchen too. Others heard, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. 30, 60, or even 100 times was so. My next question for you, Hearts, where the word has been sown, what you do with your spare time? 
I love to get together with my friends for a game of cards. I read a lot of novels and of course there's TV. I have my favorite soap operas and sitcoms, and I enjoy several good videos every week with my friends. Satan comes and takes away the world. I spend a good deal of my time on the telephone. I read the newspapers and a couple of news magazines every week. When I see people suffering from all the earthquakes, I wonder why God doesn't do something about it. I try to keep up with all the latest scientific findings, and I'm beginning to doubt if the earth was really created in six days, as the Bible says. Since they have no root, they last only a short time. I have no spare time these days. I got two jobs to make ends meet. My mortgage payments are high, and of course, we have to have a good car. And my wife wants fine rocks and the latest fashions. You should see the bells. I have to pay from all my credit cards. I've got payments on our new boat and RV. Not I never had time to enjoy them. I told at the church that I'm just too busy to take any offices this year. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word. The most important thing on my schedule is my quiet time. I get up early to study my lesson, meditate on a portion of the scripture, and pray. Then I jog for half an hour. I enjoy sleeping, gardening, and hiking. Last Sunday, I went with Pathfinders on a hike and camped up. Once a week, I work in a soup kitchen, and twice a week, I have Bible studies going. It seems I'm always involved in something down at the church. I love it. Others hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. 30, 60, or even 100 times was what was sown. Tell me, hearts, where the world has been sown, what do you take time to listen each day? I listen to my friends. Their opinions are very important to me. And of course, I listen to my music. I have stocks of it, or the latest hits. I love my music fast and well. The louder the beat, the better I like it. I, it puts me in the mood to party. Say that in the word. I listen to anyone who has a nice, juicy bit of gossip. I listen to the news. I respect the opinions of the great philosophers and scientists. I like I like to go hear a really good preacher, you know, like Billy Graham. Most of the time, I go to sleep when I go to our church because the preacher is boring. Since they have no root, they last only a short time. I listen to the news and the stock market. I listen to my business associates and and those who are successful in life. Naturally, I listen to what people see about me. It is important that I, I am well told of in the community. I listen to what my wife and children want, and I try to buy it for them. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of the wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the world. I take time every morning to not only pray, but to listen to what God has to say through His Word. I listen to His voice speaking quietly to me during the day, telling me, telling me what He wants me to do. I listen to the people around me to find out how can I help them. Others hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. 30, 60, or even 100 times or so. Tell me now, hearts. Where, where the word has been sown, what is your greatest wish in life? What is your goal? I want to experience all the pleasures the world has to offer. There is no way I'm going to let God interfere with the way I live my life. I'm not interested in his word. Satan comes and takes away the word. I wish the church were all that it's supposed to be. Loving, caring, forgiving, understanding community. I wish it were easier to be a Christian and that and there weren't so many restrictions on the way to live. Now, can you tell me what it is going to hurt? Is I drink a few beers or eat a ham sandwich? 
But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. My greatest desire is to be successful in life, to make a home for myself, to reach the top of my profession. I want to make enough money to retire comfortably and to enjoy life in my own age. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word. My greatest desire is to be like Jesus. I pray every day that the Holy Spirit will reproduce his character in my life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, humility, and self-control. Others hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. 30 or even a hundred times what was sown. Which kind of soil is in the garden of your heart? Which soil do you want to be there? We cannot change the soil of our hearts, but He can. If you are but willing, He, the gracious gardener, will do the deep work necessary to produce in our lives the fruits of His spirits. If you will but allow Him to work, He will open, He will come in into your heart and dig up the hard packed places, remove the stones, and root out the thorns. He wants to work the soul of your heart until it is richly productive. Will you let him begin today? Amen. Amen.